If you were wondering where I've been for the last two weeks, I was moving house. I've left Sydney and moved to a much smaller town in the highlands outside Sydney, which is kind of like a small English town with its cool climate, deciduous trees and big country estates. The best thing about my new home is that it's a really popular place for arty and crafts people, so I'm hoping to make a lot of new friends here. The absolute first thing I did after I moved in and set up somewhere to sleep was to set up my desk. I'm Ruby from The Useful Journal. I review dot grid journals and share my creative adventures. Today I thought you might like to join me as I put all my stationery back in my desk and talk you through some of the items and where I put them and the desk itself because it's pretty special. I tried to get Bailey into the shot but he was having none of it. He's nice and warm in front of the fire here, a few moving boxes, but he did not want to move. Did you Bailey? Hey, Bailey, look! You good boy. Yeah. He's a bit worn out from all this moving. Above my desk there are 16 small cubby holes along with a central set of shelves that I removed to create a larger cubby hole that fits up to five journals. Also above the desk are two wide low profile drawers two pen drawers and low wide open shelves. There is also lots of room to slip some low profile containers to the back of the desk under the cubby holes. All my pens are stored in these cubby holes sorted by colour. I have black pens, fountain pens and lead pencils in one. Then the colours are grouped into pink, blue and purple in one and green, brown, red, orange and yellow in another. Kind of cool colours versus warm colours. In another cubby hole I have all my greys and my Sharpie creative markers and another holds all my random highlighters, Sharpies and pens that I don't use very often. The cubby holes are quite long, which is fine for things like my Tombow dual brush pens, but for my shorter pens I've added a cardboard backing that shortens the length of the cubby hole, so it's still easy to grab the pens from the front and they don't disappear down into the back of the slot. This means that some cubby holes are good for long pens and others for short pens. The setup for my camera isn't the best, but it was the best I could manage with this type of roll top desk. This means that several cubby holes are hard to access and in these I store the items I don't need very often, like cotton swabs, crayons, candles and matches. Pretty random. A bit easier to access are my knife, whiteout, erasers, pencil sharpeners, glass dip pen, eraser crumb brush page clips, bookmarks and tweezers. This desk was my grandfather's who was a farmer in country New South Wales. I believe the desk came from my grandmother's family who probably shipped it from America to Australia in the early 1900s because I found that this Cutler roll top desk is around circa 1910. It's made of American oak and it is by far my favourite piece of furniture. Cutler roll top desks were mass produced and very popular in their day because they kept everything neat and tidy when you closed the roll top, but they also kept your personal papers away from prying eyes. The locking mechanism in particular is really clever. There's this peg at the back corners of the desk and basically when you roll the the roll top down and it goes into its locking mechanism at the front. That makes the pegs drop at the back and that then locks all the drawers. So just by having that one key at the front, you not only lock the top of your desk, which is concealed under the roll top, but you can also lock all the drawers. It's really clever. The only problem with it is that when you move it, you can take the top of the desk off the two sets of drawers and when you do that, you've got to be careful that the two dropping pegs don't fall 
inside the desktop and so I usually take them in place before I move it because I've had them fall inside before and it was a huge mission to get them out again. I love being able to work at a desk that has been in my family for such a long time and I like to imagine my grandfather working there doing the farm accounts. I just, it really appeals to me. So for that reason, I'm happy to compromise on the fact that it's not great with computers because of the cords and it's not great with my camera because it's not good things to attach it to. So I'm happy to compromise on all that just because of the family history associated with the desk. The desktop is obviously not designed for computers. Over 100 years old, understandable. Uh, the, there's nowhere to put the cords, as I mentioned. If you have uh, something with cords, the cords have to go up and over the sides of the roll top. The other problem is that the depth of the desk, the bit before you get to the cubby holes, is not that deep. So it's okay for a laptop, but as soon as you have and you'd probably get away with a screen and a keyboard, but it's no good with a laptop and a screen or with a desktop with the CPU on the desk. It just, it's just not got space, but it works okay with a laptop, which is fine with me because that's what I've got and I can always charge it off the desk. So I've found it works for me, but it's not for everyone. Below the desk surface, there are four drawers on either side. They go for the full depth of the desk, so you can actually fit two A4 folders end to end. There's so much room and the bottom drawers are also a good height for my larger items, like containers holding coloured pencils. My drawers are full of stickers, collage papers, watercolour paints and paper, cameras and external hard drives, stencils, stamps, rulers, glues and other general stationery. A bonus is being able to store the books on the top of the desk. I used to have journals and all my sticker boxes along the top, but in this new house the internet router has to be up there so I only have half the length available to me now. Another bonus is the pull-out shelf on either side of the desk above the drawers that is pretty strong and I use it to hold books or other items I want to keep out of my work area but need close by. To close my desk I need to lie down the two lights and I need to remove the camera brackets. It's worth doing when I am going to be away for a while or if I want the house to be tidier or there's going to be kids in the house and they want to play with all my pens and I don't really like that. So I close the desk in those kinds of situations. Get up, 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 get up. Hey, you really don't want to play. I'm sorry, I just want to get you in the picture. You're being a sookie lala. Moving the desk is simplified somewhat by being able to remove those two vertical sets of drawers. It's tricky as I mentioned to get the locking mechanism right and getting the screws all back in the right place but it's worth it just making it easier to move, easier to protect and as I said I would never complain about anything difficult about this desk because I love using it so much. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of my desk and all my stationery. Actually, it's not even all my stationery because there's other little spots I have it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I will enjoy using it to bring you more videos. See ya!